Three college students in Massachusetts suspended for not wearing a mask while outside and off campus. Here to break down the aftermath, Wendy Patrick. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Raul. Okay, what, what's at the root of this lawsuit? If the girls were off campus, why is this an issue for the school? Raul, is it just me or is this a trend that we it's keep talking about? Some, it's, it's the same question um, packaged so many different ways. It's how much can the school discipline students for what they do off campus on their own time? So for this one, let me cue it up this way. You've heard the, the slogan that a picture is worth a thousand words. Hmm. Well, it's also worth $16,000. A photo of the maskless trio, as I'll call them, these three girls without masks on, during a period of time when the school said they had to have masks on, on or off campus, cost each one of the girls' family $16,000 in tuition. So there's an issue here, not only of was the school within its rights to enforce this policy, which it actually did have at the time, this was back in March, but does the punishment fit the crime? And Raul, that's what we keep talking about over and above some of the, you know, the, the black letter law or the guidance or the policies that may have been in, in touch at the time, but we're talking about whether or not the punishment is just too yeah. severe. The school's argument here for punishing the student, I'm assuming has to do with public safety and the safety of their campus and the safety of their students because they'll go out there and bring it back onto their campus. All policies have that at heart. That's exactly right, Raul. And so you can see that it was well-intentioned that they want to protect the students, the faculty, from each other, from people that are on or off campus. But one of the other hallmarks of this case is that was the community policy at the time. Now, I know that the, the lawyers are fighting back. They're probably going to be um, representing the families of these young ladies in the lawsuit, saying, but can you have local policy that's in contradiction to CDC policy? Mm. So you can see there's a balance of the equities. But as far as these families go, yes, they understand that that was the policy at the time. And yes, they understand that the school, as you mentioned, wanted to protect all of its students. Right. But is this the way to do it? And then were you inconsistent in the way you enforced that policy? That's the next question that they'll ask. There's a lot of precedent setting that was going on at the time because you mentioned at the time what was the timing when, when did this happen and at what point in the pandemic that's right so it happened in early march when the cases were spiking and so we have to take that into sure. consideration this isn't last week but even then if you do have this concern which nobody disagrees with if you do have this policy which the students knew were you enforcing it consistently? Right. And that's where we get to this third prong of injustice. Mm. So the, the families of the young ladies are saying, look, there were other cases, including a hockey celebration uh, not long afterwards, um, where they weren't enforced. Ah. They didn't enforce the policy in the same fashion. So then you start looking at that. And, and sure. as you know, from law school, what we're doing is queuing up ways to really compare and contrast what happened to these young ladies which would happen in similar cases. Oh, sure. And, and why wasn't the hockey celebration, why wasn't the hockey celebration uh, busted? Well, remember that it was after the, the photograph of these girls. And again, you know, the, these facts are coming out. And if yeah. I were the lawyer, I would have a big timeline <laughs> that yeah. I would be constructing. And that would want to be one of the first things that showed to the judge or jury and then say, well, let's figure out how these enforcements were being done um, at what point in time. Because remember that some of these community policies and the school policy, they're driven by numbers. How many cases, yeah. um, what percentage of people were, uh, were testing positive. So obviously they have to ebb and flow with the statistics, but we want them to do that consistently. And we want the school to have a consistent policy where everyone's punished the same. Yeah, but I mean, you mentioned, I mean, loss of credits, loss of tuition, getting booted off virtual classes. This seems like more than a first warning slap on the wrist type of thing. That's exactly what the parents of these of these girls are arguing. They're saying the zero tolerance policy. Does the punishment have to be this severe? Couldn't the first uh, couldn't the first time be a warning or maybe they, they have an opportunity to make up the finals that they've lost. So they're asking right wow. now, and I, I suppose negotiations are probably c continuing behind the scenes, but they want that opportunity to have this not be the be all end all suspension, straight to suspension. Right. But they want them to be some, some compromise policy where they won't lose that money and sure. these young ladies won't lose two whole semesters. I just wonder, because this was a public school, UMass Amherst is where this happened, versus a private university, if it had happened uh, at a private university, probably not. 
Well, yeah, and that, that's another thing is they're, they're probably going to look at whether or not they're being treated at this public school in the same way right. that they would be treated if they attended somewhere else. And all of this carries a lot of weight with the jury, maybe down the line, but that's no consolation right now, either financially or academically. Yep. But I'll tell you one takeaway, Raul. One takeaway is no school policy, no zero tol tolerance policy, and no the potential punishment. God forbid a first violation should actually land them in more trouble than they than they uh, than they anticipated. And you may not want to go to a school or might not want to send your kids to a school that have policies that are this harsh. So hmm. it's a word to the wise and an eye opener for everyone that has young ones going to college. A lot of eyes on this case for sure. Wendy Patrick, thank you. Thanks, Raul.